let's get started. So, my name is Rikard Tulin, uh, and just a disclaimer, I have no association whatever with liquid waste. I'm just using the tool and I'm very happy and pleased with it. So I'm kind of neutral. Uh, I'm the Java user group leader for Gothenburg, and I'm getting close to doing that for almost a decade. And I'm also the project lead for the software development conference Dev Mobile in Gothenburg which is a mobile development conference. Uh, this is a squeezed presentation. It's actually 60 minutes. So if you would like to see the full presentation, you have the URL at the bottom. So basically what Liquibase tries to achieve is to get your database changes and get control of, uh, over those. Uh, you would never ever uh, develop your code without putting that into some version con version control system. So why would you do the same with your database changes? That's the basic question. So Liquibase is uh, Apache 2.0 licensed and what it actually does is that you describe your database changes or your database refactoring and put those into XML or JSON or YAML or even plainish SQL files, and then you let um, uh, Liquibase uh, take control of, uh, over when those changes should, should be applied. So uh, um, the basic concept of uh, Liquibase is the change set, and in this example it's expressed as XML, so it should be fairly uh, straightforward, this example. Uh, we will create a table uh, called person and add a column uh, with a type. The, this is the way to do liquid waste refactorings. Uh, when liquid waste run, it will create the table in the database, uh, in the same database as the refactoring is uh, uh, executed or added to. So Liquibase will keep track of what has been executed and what needs to be executed. And uh, the, the basic feature set of Liquibase is that it will give you automatic rollback of your change sets. And of course you cannot rollback every change you do. If you drop a table, for example, you cannot roll back the data. That's impossible. So, but for, for most of the common refactorings, like uh, uh, adding an index, you can revert, or you, you will have an automatic rollback statement for that. You also have the possibility to do database diffs, uh, to try to synchronize databases, but there's quite a lot of other tools that probably do that a lot better, and the goal of Liquibase is really not to have inconsistency between your databases. It should be equal, everyone. So if you're forced to use database if you're probably do doing something wrong with Liquibase. You also have the possibility to create a starting change set so you could reverse engineer your database and get the XML if you need that. Uh, really, there's no need to do that. You can just start use Liquibase at any given point of time. You just have to decide from now on, all our changes will be within Liquibase or some other tool like Liquibase. Uh, you can also generate the database change documentation. It's change documentation. And I will briefly show you. And it will look something like this. You see a list of all the tables. You can list all the authors and see what change set that, that author has created. And you can dig in further. Whoops, that was a bad person. <laughs> uh, you can look at what pending SQL that will be executed or applied to a given database, for example, and stuff like that. That's quite handy. Uh, one other very important thing with Liquibase is that it works very well with branching and merging. So as you put your database changes right next to the code, if you do a branch, you just do 
the chains set within that branch. And then when you're done with the branch and merge that back to trunk, it just works. So it's, it's really, really, really good if you're working lots with branching. So and this is uh, the more for reference, uh, the database uh, refactorings that are supported by Liquibase. And you have quite a lot. You can create table, drop table, create views, you can uh, insert data, you could update data, delete data, add foreign keys, index, and so forth. So Liquibase is just more than updating data. It's more of a refactoring of your database tool as well. So, as I said, uh, you keep your database deltas and put them in, in your source control uh, repository, just right beside your uh, normal code. Uh, and that will ensure that you have a correlation between code and the revisions. So at any given point of time, you can look at this code will match that database structure. And this will actually allow you to automate uh, the process of applying database changes to the tool. So it will be all automatic. Uh, and it will obviously keep all your environment in a consistent state in that way. And it gives you a possibility also to, if you deploy a version in production and you find some problem in your file, you need to revert it, the performance is bad or something, then you actually can revert uh, to the old version and roll back the database changes as well. And there's a commercial tool called JRebel Live that actually uses Liquibase under the hood as a mean to achieve this. So if you have a typical development environment like this, you have your eight developers, they have eight local application servers, they have eight schemas, you have your development server, you have a CI server, you have a test or QA server, you have two staging nodes, and you have two production nodes. That, that's quite a lot of schemas and application servers and getting all those into sync. So the old school way to do this is, let's say I need to do something very complicated like uh, adding column A to column table B. Um, then you develop your code change in a SQL and then you perhaps uh, develop the code, of course, that correspond to that, and then you might create a Jira issue to keep track of this SQL needs to be executed in some other environment when we're deploying this, and then you commit the code, then you send out a nice email to your fellow developers, asking them when you check out my change, don't forget to execute this as SQL code, otherwise your system will break. And then, of course, you also need manually to uh, execute the SQL statements to your dev and CRM environment, and you need to deploy that versions as well that corresponds to the SQL change, and so on. And days later, when you're going to do this on your QA environment, it's all repeats, and then you have your staging environment, and then finally you have your production environment. So it looks something like, like spaghetti like this. And if you end up in this situation, you probably have some, time, some kind of uh, deployment coordination team meeting where um, all stakeholders and all, you review SQL and see, uh, it gets all complicated. Um, perhaps that, as I described it, was a bit exaggerated. That's fine. And you might think, sure, but we have try to automate some of these things, um, then I'm just worried that you actually are running into some kind of anti-pattern, not invented here, because there are actually some good tools that do exactly this, and it probably does it much better uh, than the home invented things. And there are other alternatives to Liquibase as well. I will show that in the last slide. So the Liquibase way of doing this, you still need to add your column A to your table B, so you develop your code, you do your SQL change, and then you commit and forget. That's all. No more worries, because the database change is automatically applied either uh, by the container, and you kind of hook it into either the Spring or Servant Listener or by CDI. So it's, the, it's bundled with your deployment unit, and it will 
magically just work. So, a quick little demo. I have a a simple Maven project and a database. The database is just named JFocus. It doesn't contain anything. I have two chain sets, one that create a table called messages and a column called message and a different or a second chain set that will create a column JFocus. Simple enough. So I have hooked this into the Maven uh, process. So when I do Maven install, it just compiles. Actually, no source code in this project, but um, if there were, it would have compiled the source code, of course. And then Liquibase will kick in, and it will discover that, OK, I need to run change set one, and I need to run the second change set. So if we now just refresh, we see that we have the messages table with the two columns. Simple enough. But let's say I would like to roll back the second statement that I've written. So now I, now I tell Liquibase, output only the SQL for that rollback statement. And keep remember this, that this is done automatically by Liquibase. I didn't write this SQL. So here is the SQL that be, will be performed. And as I'm confident that this is correct, I just tell Liquibase to actually roll back that last statement. So it rollbacks. And if we head back to do a refresh, and you saw that the last column is gone, and of course, we can do that once more. So, there we go. Oops. One of the things that is quite um, difficult to get over is the wrong is right principle when using Liquibase. If you have uh, written the change set and you have executed that change set to any environment, you cannot change it because it's kind of protected by a CLC value and you will kind of break the, 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 the structure for everyone else. So if you misspell, for, for example, the name of a column and you have executed that in one environment, it will hit production. You cannot change it. You need to write a new statement that corrects the old one. So it, it's a bit difficult to get over it because as craftsmanship or engineers, you would like to just correct your mistake, but that's not possible, even if it's just uh, been executed on your CI server. It, you have to... Yeah, you could try to roll back all environments, but if you have this situation, you have to go out to eight developers and tell them to roll back. So it's kind of the, the easiest way is to just try to correct it, unless it's fatal, of course. Uh, one other good thing with uh, Liquibase, uh, it is, works very well with store procedures. So if you have store procedures, you can now put them in version control. And whenever they are updated, it will be applied. Uh, another very neat thing is that you can neutralize, neutralize data. So if you're taking your production database and push that down to the QA or test server or your development server, you can use this run always attribute. And then you could write a change set like this, where you go into the users table and you kind of wipe out the email address and the passwords. Um, so you don't start sending emails to your customers in your dev environment. Uh, one alternative to, to uh, Liquibase is Flyway. And there's a bunch of other tools that more works like database diffs, but I wouldn't recommend that because that's quite a different story. So Liquibase has been there for a long time and Flyway is a bit more new, but I think they're equally feature rich. So you should try one of those. 
So my real life experience using Liquibase, I've been using it for half a decade uh, for in projects with spanning 50 man years and it been working extremely well. No pain when hitting production with database changes. It just works. It's, re it's really magical and it's one of those Java, hidden Java secrets that people should know about these kinds of tools. Um, unless you're the new SQL story, because then this is not the right tool. So the over overall score is 97% and the missing 3% is that this is all about databases and I'm not really a database guy. So it's take the pain out of the worries for me. So any questions? Yeah, um, the question was if I'm using um, XML or the, the play, uh, plainish SQL statements. Uh, we use X, uh, XML and it works quite good. You need to think about the structure. Uh, in one project we ended up with 10,000 lines of XML and that's quite a pain um, even to load up in, the <laughs> in your IDE. Uh, but XML is quite good. It depends on how much refactoring you do. If you create hundreds of tables every day, probably not a good thing. Perhaps, I don't know, but it's, it's quite straightforward. And I know it's very scary to express things in XML. I hate it, like ant configuration. It's, but for me, it's okay. More questions? Yes. You, 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 the question was uh, about data migration. Uh, you can do that. You can insert data, you can update the data, and you can load data as well. But this tool is not really about... You can do things like that, but you have to be a bit... Uh, you have to think what you're doing because uh, you have probably have a dependency to, to the structure or the contents of the data. And are, are you really sure that your development server has that uh, um, primary key that perhaps you're trying to delete? So you, you can do it and you can express preconditions and things like that. Uh, but you have to think about the structure. And I've, yeah, surely doable. I think we have time for one more. The, the table, or? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you read from the database change log when you applied the sets. Yep. Because in, in there, there is the information on what sets have been applied so far. Yes. And I guess I could, oh, wait, sorry. That's part of the, the environment. Yep. Um, exactly. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, the question was uh, about the database change log table, and that's created automatically by Liquibase and kind of part of the inst infrastructure. And there, everything is recorded, like who executed it, uh, and the date, and the type, and comments, and things like that. And also, very important, the checksum. So if you try to tamper the change set, it will fail and say that someone has actually changed this from perhaps your dev environment to your QA environment. And, and, and it will stop. And you can also do all kinds of trick, and I have been all, unfortunate to have to do that. And you can do uh, kind of RFC processes, or when you, need, you have a database administrator that would like to review code and things like that, you can just generate the SQL statements and have, have him approved before you apply it. But it's not the recommended way of doing it because I think Liquibase does it very well. And if you have executed your statement on your local machine and your dev machine and your CM machine and every environment, you can be quite sure that it actually is working. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much.